Okay. Well, let me put my phone on silent here. Just to be sure. Okay. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, back here with another reaction video. Uh, plan to do one on the weekend here. Um, although it is technically Monday, almost 1 a.m., um, but uh, that's fine. Um, I'll, I'll consider this a Sunday upload. Uh, anyways, so we're going to react to uh, this real life lore video. It's a good channel here. Um, what if you lived in the most crowded place on earth? So I'm ass I haven't seen this video, so I'm assuming this is going to be China somewhere, somewhere in China. Um, so let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, I don't want to do a lot of talking here, and let's get into it. This video was made possible by Skillshare. Get unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free for two months by signing signing up at I'll give you all the enhanced SH premium bitrate. Real Life Lore 26. The odds are that if you're watching this video, you're probably doing it alone or in a pretty small group of friends. You're probably watching this with a reasonable amount of privacy around you, but what if you were suddenly teleported to the least private and the most crowded place in the world and were forced to live there? What would your day-to-day -day life end up being like? Currently, the most dense concentration of people you can find anywhere in the world is here in Mumbai in the Dharavi slums. Oh, wow. 700,000 people live here, packed together into just two square kilometers, which would be like shoving the entire population of Alaska down into just two city blocks. Life in Dharavi Jeez. is hard. Good lord. But it's not the most crowded settlement oh, wow. in human history, and therefore it's not where you're getting teleported to. As recently as 1993, the title of the most crowded place on Earth belonged to a tiny sized settlement in Hong Kong known mm. as the Kowloon Walled City. With nickname I think I heard about this. Um I know that I know it was somewhere in China or like Hong Kong or somewhere. Uh, but of course, I don't remember the name, but I think I heard about this a few years ago, but I mean, how old is this video? Four years. Um, so um, maybe I did watch this video before. I'm not sure, but I definitely don't remember it. So let, let's keep let's keep going here. It's like the city of anarchy and the city of darkness. You know that it's about to get pretty wild. But before we get too crazy here, you need to first understand this. The population density in New York City is only 10,431 people per square kilometer. The density of people in Dharavi is more like 277,000 people per Jesus square kilometer. Christ. Over 26 times more dense than New York. Kowloon That's too many people. That's in such close quarters. Good lord. How do people live that way? Walled City, on the other hand, was more like 1.9 million people <laughs> per square kilometer. Jeez. 182 times as densely packed together than even New York. The I mean, were they forced to live there? I mean, it is China we're talking about here. I, I know he's a Hong Kong, but Hong Kong is basically China. Um, so, were they forced to live there or could they leave? I mean, why would you live there? The city occupied a space of only six and a half acres, or roughly the same as four football fields, but was home to as many as 50,000 people living there. To put Jeez. it in another way, imagine that you live in a comfortable 1,200 square foot home all by yourself, but then you shove nine more people into that same home with you. Further, imagine that your home is merely one unit of a 14-story building, and every other unit in that building is just as full as yours. Then, imagine hundreds of those buildings all crammed together into just those four football fields of space. In fact, if every single person in the world... Nine people in 1,200 square feet. That's pretty crowded. For one house, that's, that's pretty crowded, but it's doable, you know, um... But having that many people on in every house, or I guess you could say apartment, uh, yeah, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty cramped. The world lived as closely together to one another as the people did in the walled city. The it's doable if you're poor. Uh, if, if you're not poor, then uh, yeah, it might be too cramped for you. Higher human species would be capable of living and working together in just Rhode Island. But what would it actually be like for you to live in such a horrifically crowded place? 
the street level of the walled city was full of dentist and doctor offices without any official operating licenses. So you'd always have to just take your chances with a random person who was claiming to be a dentist any time that you wanted to get your teeth checked. Oh, hell no. It could have been pretty good, or it could have been some rando off the street who decided two hours ago that he was now a dentist. Restaurants routinely offered dog meat as a tempting alternative to normal food, all without any adherence to sanitation regulations. Dozens of alleyways on the ground inside the interior of the city connected each side and the living units deep in the dark interior that lacked any windows. These alleys were only between three and six feet wide, and you would have to carry an umbrella with you to shield yourself from the drippy water pipes and people throwing garbage out above you. The alleys were almost permanently dark, since the unbelievably dense slums above blocked out most of the sunlight. The walled city was essentially the world's largest squatter camp without any official government services or even laws, and it developed a nickname, the City of Anarchy, as the population began to skyrocket from a few hundred up to ten- So, was this during time when, um... Sorry, I'm just trying to think of what I'm trying to say. Was this during a time when there was video cameras? Because, I mean, this is an old picture here. Obviously, it's black and white. Um, but, I mean, I mean, it doesn't have to be old. But was this during a uh, video camera? I mean, does anyone have video from um, going in there? Like, even old video? I would like to see that. Tens of thousands, both the British and the Chinese governments grew reluctant to interfere with the weird situation and carried out a very hands-off approach with regards to the city. The hold on, hold on. Someone built these buildings. Was it, which government was it? Was it the Hong Kong government, which is basically under British rule? I'm assuming this is back in the day. So like, was it, did the UK build it for them or did China build it? Um, someone built these slums. Um, so how, how can you have a hands-off approach? Like, oh, that's curious. This massive buildings, all these people just popped up. Like, uh, we'll just leave it alone. Like, <laughs> what? This is how random people could claim to be dentists, chef, serve dogs in their cafes, and why nobody knew what to do with their garbage. So they either threw it out of their windows or hauled it up to the roof to be abandoned forever. Jeez. Since the official government rarely intervened in whatever happened inside, the walled city became increasingly attractive to the people whose society... Okay, now this is a modern, more modern photo. Um, this looks like a car from the 90s here, um, but frowned upon, like gangsters, pimps, drug dealers, sex workers, dog eaters, refugees, and apparently even some normal, albeit maybe crazy people who simply saw an opportunity. Further up into the dark layers of the city, you could easily find opium dens, heroin stands that operated as freely as convenience stores, and brothels that operated with impunity. This Sound like a good time. <laughs> The city was a dangerous place for police, or probably anybody really, to enter, so they only ever intervened with large groups and never alone. So if you ran into trouble in- This reminds me of, um, what do you call it, uh, the popular, uh, Dredd, Judge Dredd, uh, where they had these, like, mega, mega apartment blocks, and, like, they were basically their own cities. And they had to just go in there, uh, and there's like all kinds of crime, it's real dingy in there, and it's like basically no security, and it's just chaos. Side and you call 911, the chances are that you'd probably not get an answer. On average, each person paid 35 Hong Kong dollars, or about 5 US dollars per month for their rent for a 40 square foot room of space, which is about this size relative to an actual human for reference. Oh, yeah, thousands okay, of these little rooms existed side by side of each other, stretching up to 14 stories high. Oh, Around no, 500 buildings were constructed inside of the city without a single licensed architect 
architect or engineer providing any kind of guidance whatsoever. Plumbing and sewage was almost non-existent, while tiny metal fabrication shops made up a good percentage of the units between the ground and the fifth floors. While the metal shops provided some form of employment and income, they also added vastly to the horrible pollution problem found inside. While the street level inside of the city was always cast in darkness, no matter- Okay, finally some footage inside. Like, at least a photo. Yeah, that looks... Yeah, no. No matter the time of day or year, there was also a network of- Jeez, look at this. That is just chaos here. Bears and ramps that would enable you to traverse the city without ever having to set foot on the dark surface. When zooming out to see the entire walled city, you can notice a courtyard in the center, which was the prime social gathering place and the only area on the street where the sun could reach. As mentioned previously, the roof on the city was always covered in garbage and was the prime dumping spot for residents, but it was also a pretty cool spot for you to go and check out planes that were almost crashing into everything. You see, the Walt City was located only half a mile away from Kai Tak Airport, and planes landing there would routinely fly just over the city before landing, which contributed oh to enormous noise pollution. The camp was originally built out across the ancient... You live in this super dense city, no sunlight, uh, extremely poor, crime everywhere, chaos, and on top of that, you got this jet engines just <laughs> flying over you all the time this is crazy walled city's borders on the street level but as space ran out on the ground and more people were coming in all the time they began building structure after structure on top of those old ones the residents realized though that building higher than 14 stories could result in the airplanes that were landing over at kai tak to collide and kill all of them instead so yeah nobody ever built anything above that the residents were building these? That's, that can't be the case. They're going to build 14-story buildings on their own? Or did they... I don't know. Life inside was dark, dirty, cramped, loud, and often violent. But a lot of people seemed to actually enjoy it since it kept attracting more and more people over the years. Your life inside would- Well, yeah, you enjoy it and you got, um, you got prostitution. Definitely a good time. Uh, I never done that, but definitely a good time. Um, free access to drugs if you're a druggie. Um, all this stuff, you got all this stuff here. Uh, no police and no one- no one from the government bothering you? I mean, yeah. It would be guaranteed to be I mean, it would suck to live in such a such a dense area, but like, in, in these poor conditions, but at the same time, it's like, kind of free. Radically different from the life you know now, because there isn't really any place on the earth that's quite like what the Kowloon Walled City was like. Unfortunately, you no longer can visit unless you have a time machine because the city was finally demolished by the Hong Kong government in 1994 after it became just too awesome for them to Hold on, look. This was a, a place where you would stay, this cube. This is crazy handle. All that we have left of the city today is a really lame park where it used to stand, but we thankfully have a lot of amazing photographs that people took of it back when it used to exist, like these that give you some kind of sense of what it used to be. Ah, uh, it was nice, just hanging out, chilling. Uh, what's this? Uh, you yeah, don't know what that is. Yeah, just hanging out on the roof. Not a care in the world. Like. However, there is a pretty wacky arcade in Japan called the Anata no Warehouse in Kawasaki that's created a faithful, multi-level recreation of part of the walled city, so that's probably your best chance of getting to experience what I just talked about in this video. If you end up going there, one of the first things that you'll probably want to do is take pictures. And luckily, there's a class on Skillshare for that. Professional photographer Dale McManus teaches this fantastic course, which walks you through the process of taking profession okay he's just gonna do a skillshare ad um i mean yeah go um if you want to support real life lore go do the skillshare thing okay let's get uh to a few comments here um okay i have an old friend i met online in 2003 that grew up in that city 
she said it wasn't as horrible as vic as videos make it out to be definitely lawless and dangerous but she says people also really helped each other and living there got a lot of people out of poverty we need to understand how adaptive humans can be in awful situations how we're capable of surviving and finding happiness in the worst situations i fully understand my privilege the president yeah okay um i'm not gonna get into it about privilege um yeah i'm, I'm willing to bet that uh it was mostly chill um the regular people and that just there was just these certain sections that they probably had their own little red light district and places where you can get drugs and um these are the outliers versus it being rampant everywhere within the city um yeah not like downtown la where <laughs> where you just got druggies on the street or kensington uh in uh pennsylvania uh Okay. Apparently, my parents were refugees and stayed in the city when they escaped the world to Kowloon Walled City. Indeed, it was very dense. It is not like what the majority said that negative people lived in there and helped each other. Also, not everyone in the world could or ha or can have the Western lifestyle. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Kowloon was so beloved by the people that lived there. Even military threat didn't drive them out. Apparently, they had the best noodles in Hong Kong. Dentists, doctors, barbers, air conditioning, postal service. Even schools all located in there and grown organically. With a chaperone that actually lived there, I would have loved to spend a couple of days living there and get to experience what the truest freedom in the modern world was like. I don't know about living there. I would just like to have seen a vlogger go in there and see it and do a vlog on it. Uh, like on the ground, not like one of these fake vlogs. And just show us what it was like uh but i wouldn't want to go there myself um that seems a little extreme okay um yeah usually people are saying oh people helped each other or people don't want to go i want to know how it got built um let's see wikipedia okay uh kowloon walled city all right let me blow this up here I want to know how it got built. Uh, let's see. Okay, over here. Um, design and construction. Uh, of the park. Oh, current status is park. Okay. Uh, layout and architecture. Okay, um, yeah, I read through here. <clears throat> Sorry, um, I, wanna, I really wanted to know who built it. But apparently, it was just developers who went in there and just started building. It used to be a fort um, way back in the day, like in the 1800s. And then um, they built a wall around it for, you know, military purposes. And then that's when um, it went back and forth between British and Chinese. And, um, and it just... The wall stayed up, and then they um, just kept building more and more. And then I guess developers just kept going in there to build buildings and to make it more dense uh, because uh, a lot of squatters were going in there and poor people and refugees and stuff. So, um, but yeah, it says uh, no no one wanted to take ownership because the um, Chinese said because the, the British wanted to demolish it when they were in control of Hong Kong, but the Chinese protested and saying that they were in control of this, uh, but they wouldn't exercise any like authority over it, which is weird. Um, and so they just kind of left it be and only restricted them to not building so high so the planes wouldn't hit the buildings. It's kind of weird. But anyways, uh, I'm glad you all tuned into this reaction here. Um, if you liked it, please uh, like and subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know what you think, and I'll be responding in the comments. I uh, do appreciate it, and I'll be back. Uh, I'll do another video tomorrow. I'm trying to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and so we. Uh, I'll see you here, uh, I guess, tomorrow. Bye.